It's a while since I've taken apart an LED nightlight, so I thought, okay, I shall take another one apart because in the past, I used to basically stick these mushroom ones on. They they used to be so cheap. I used to stick them on with just about every order just and hoarded it for the little caps because I, I then made different lights myself. However, this one is a bit different. It's quite nice. It's described as romantic flower LED nightlight with light sensor control home decoration. And it came from a very odd vendor, Tell Me Dash Why, who, amongst other things that I ordered from them, was a power supply. And it's really strange because it came wrapped in newspaper. And this, you know how when you order stuff from eBay and you might buy from several different sellers and then when you go to pay, you find out they were all Dragon Marts or they were all Tom Top. They were all just one big, huge Chinese seller. Uh, I get the feeling that the way this is wrapped up in newspaper, it's got that more personal touch. Uh, it, I think it's from a smaller seller, but I, I might be wrong. But anyway, I digress. What we're here to see here is this interesting light. I did try translating the text on it. It, it kind of semi-translated okay. Uh, it's a complex language. This is why there's so much Chinglish. The translation from English to uh, Chinese and vice versa tends to go wrong quite a lot because there are so many interpretations of the symbols of the Chinese language. It's an interesting language. Anyway, let me bring in this slightly sooty uh, socket. We'll plug this in and nothing will happen because uh, it's got a light sensor underneath it and it's very sensitive light. So now I'll turn this off and I show... Oh, it's lit actually. That's quite good. It has lit... I, would, I was going to take the exposure off, but I won't bother. You can see that uh, we've got little flowers that can be posed. You can bend them and shape them. Uh, and they've got the light sensor so that as I tilt it up towards the light, it will gradually get dimmer and dimmer and then it'll go out completely. It just gradually fades out. I know why that is. The light is coming back. Watch your eyes. It's back. Um, let's open it. But before I open it, there's one other feature that's worth mentioning. I did try this in the hoppy. The hoppy showed nothing. It, it wouldn't register it because on the box it says power consumption is a fifth of a watt. We can work that out, I suppose, by measuring the current, but it's tiny. It is, let's just say it's just three LEDs. It is tiny and it will be a capacitive dropper. But an interesting thing to note is, see the uh, base here? The LEDs are plugged in. So you can actually unplug the LEDs and you can plug new ones in. You can swap colours to your heart's content, but it's worth mentioning you can't leave open circuit. Um, I say that, I've not seen the circuitry yet, but I, I'm going to guess that you can't because that's how they used to supply the little mushroom lights, the toadstool lights. They came with that little socket. Let me just pull this off here. It's, it, this is where I pull it right off the LED. Is it going to come out? It's coming out, it's coming out. So these ones came with the socket, and it was quite good, because, uh, again, you could swap them, but laterally with the little mushroom lights. They were using standard sort of GST-style sockets. Uh, with the mushroom lights, they changed that so that you couldn't change the LEDs, which was a shame, actually. I quite liked the fact you could customise them. But uh, not with an LED that goes open circuit. That means that rules out the flickering the, and the fast-flashing LEDs, or just the standard slow-flashing LEDs. But let's open this up. Let's take a look inside. Is this going to reach? No, it's not going to reach. Right, okay, because screwdriver plays. Is this going to reach? Yes, but it's the wrong size of driver. Let's try again. Let's go for this uh, VDE driver that I've had to trim the end off so you can actually get it into That's not going to fit either. One moment, please. The screw is out. Let us resume. So this is going to split apart like this. To reveal the little circuit board inside, it's got a little light sensor in the bottom there. Oh, the LEDs actually just plug in. Well, that's nice. That's very retro. Uh, right, tell you what. I'll take a little picture of this, and then we can take a much closer look at this, because it's an interesting circuit, and there's an interesting experiment I wish to do that may result in this tiny little capacitor popping. We shall see that shortly. Uh, I'll be back in a moment. I'm just going to take the pictures. Here are the pictures. Let's uh, take a look at the circuitry and see what's what. We have a capacitor here, 220 nanofarad capacitor, with a really 
tiny, you can just see it tucked down here, you can see a tiny little 8th watt, 1 mega ohm resistor. The 8th watt is too small because it's going to see quite a high voltage drop across that and the 8th watt resistor is only rated for about 100 to 150 volts. Uh, on a plus note, there is a big beefy, actually too big, it's, it doesn't need to be this size, but maybe they're using it as a fuse. 220 ohm resistor, so that's going to really limit inrush current. And then there is a discrete full bridge rectifier based in four 1N4007 diodes. Classic 1 amp, 1000 volt diodes, a really common diode. The, there's a little capacitor here. Uh, what value is that capacitor? It is 4.7 megfarad, 4.7 megfarad, megfarad, 50 volt. I'll show you the schematic shortly anyway. Uh, there is a transistor, S9015, which is a PNP transistor, and then a couple of resistors, and the LDR is just off shot here. It's just, well, well, here is the LDR because I've disconnected it. If you ever want a device with an LDR to come on all the time, just uh, either black it out or just cut it off, and then because it sees a very high resistance there, it just thinks it's a, a LDR but in the dark. And all, all, other than that, all we've got there is the connector for the LEDs. I'll show you the back of the circuit board if you wish to do a bit of reverse engineering. In fact, for that, we shall just zoom up just a tad to fill the frame. So this is one side. And this is the other side if you want to have a wee go at reverse engineering that yourself. Freeze frame and then explore. I flipped the image so that... Uh, in the case of uh, the transistor here, transistors over here it matches, and likewise, capacitor down here, resistor down here, and diodes here, it all matches position. Let me bring in the schematic. It's very classic. There's only one real oddity to this, so I'm going to zoom up a wee bit more so we can see this better. The incoming AC supply, it's a standard capacitive dropper, 220 nanofarad, 400 volts. That gives a current of approximately 15 milliamps through the LEDs, which is absolutely great because that means these LEDs are going to last for ages. There's a reason these leads are connected. I'm going to be powering this up directly in a moment. There's a 220 ohm fusible inrush limiting resistor. Multi-purpose uh, will limit the maximum peak current to about an amp when you connect it to, when you plug it in. And there's this, you know, the capacitor is discharged and the mains might be at its peak of the sine wave and it means you get a sudden current pulse. In this case it limits that, that but that would also be smoothed by this capacitor here as well. We've got the four diode bridge rectifier and then the little 4.7 megfarad 50 volt capacitor. I was expecting something more like a say a 12 volt capacitor or 25 volt but a higher value. This is something you could, there's modifications you could make. Then we've got the connector with the three LEDs, the three little flower LEDs across it. And then the transistor, and then we've got a 12K resistor and the LDR. I shall write LDR next to that. L-D-R. Light-dependent resistor. Uh, cadmium sulfide, usually. Uh, so, the way this is configured, th this could have been an NPN transistor, and that LDR could have been up there, and this resistor could have been down there. They always do it this way. I don't know why they specifically choose the PNP. But with the PNP, when the base is pulled negative, it uh, turns the transistor on. So as the LDR, as the daylight comes up and more light shines in this, it pulls it more to the negative rail and that gradually... Uh, no, sh yeah, that's right. Uh, the uh, Let me start that again. because th This is a very odd bit of circuitry. Let's, let's start here, right? There's a capacitive dropper, there's a capacitor, and it makes the LEDs light, okay? The way it turns them off is it shorts the LEDs out. I should have said that right at the beginning. So when this uh, transistor turns on, it's actually bridging the LEDs, and all you end up with it is effectively what the, the mains and the circuitry sees is it sees this capacitor across the mains and sears the resistor, almost like a snubber network. Very low loss. The 15 milliamps will still be running, but it's what out of phase with the mains, it's sort of, uh, it doesn't equate to actual functional power. That's terrible, I should have described that better, but it's it's a complex subject, it's power factor. So when it's daylight, the LDR goes low resistance because light's shining on it and it pulls this down and it turns the transistor on and it shunts out the LEDs and they fade out and they stay out during the day. The 12K resistor is used to balance with this LDR. You could shuffle that to change the sensitivity, or if you want it just on all the time, you could just chop everything off. You could chop this, 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 and this off could be uh, removed. 
This resistor is a bit odd. I wonder if that's to detect when, because because these LEDs can go open circuit when they fail, or you could actually unplug it. You know, you could be messing around and uh, a kid could pull one out, which isn't great because uh, at the point that it's mid in, you can make contact and it is kind of mains voltage. But uh, I like the fact that you can actually do, you can play about with them. Maybe mains voltage isn't something to play about with for kiddies, but it is for us, the big kiddies. So this resistor here, normally uh, with the LEDs on, there'll be 9 volts across that and the current through this resistor will just be a couple of milliamps tops. It's nothing major. Most of the current will be flowing through the LEDs. If an LED goes open circuit, then that resistor is going to basically start passing all the current and we're going to test this in a moment. Maybe I'm wrong here. We'll, we'll see what sort of... We'll try and work out what voltage it's going to go up to. Um, the current is 15 milliamps. The voltage across that resistor in the event of these going open circuit would be... Keep in mind, there's also this resistor here, but this, this one, I think, will be lower anyway, so it, it's not so significant. Uh, it will be 15 milliamps through a 4.7K resistor. The voltage across it, V equals I times R, so that's 0 0.015, that's the 15 milliamps, times the value of the resistor, which is 4,700 ohms, but it's going to give a voltage across of about 70 volts. 70 volts. Is that really going to do that? We're going to find out. I'm going to unplug the LEDs and we're going to measure that. Uh, that would kind of protect the capacitor to a degree. It's not too much above its voltage rating, but 70 volts uh, times 0 0.015, that 15 milliamps, means that resistor is going to be dissipating a watt. That's quite high. Will it burn out? Will it smoke? I'm not really sure. There's one way to find out, and I'm about to do it. So uh, have I covered everything yet? Uh, capacitive dropper, LEDs, and then they're being shunted by daylight. And you might think, this is a really wasteful circuit, but in reality, I have seen an attempt by someone else, another manufacturer, to create a circuit that only turned the LEDs on when it detected dusk with a transistor in series with them, but it needed it. It was so complicated. It had multiple transistors. It had a separate power supply just for that uh, transistor, and it ended up, they might as well have just done this. This is absolutely the most simplest, most efficient way to do it. Incidentally, one of the modifications you could make, you could put a Zener diode across here, rated about 12 volts, 12 volts, and if you did that, it would clip the voltage if that went open circuit, and uh, the dissipation from the Zener diode would be 12 volts, roughly, times 0 0.015, that 15 milliamps that's come through that capacitor, equals about 0.2 watts. So a basic Zener diode could actually have been put down here instead of that resistor. And there is a position in the circuit board, effectively, to do that. You could All you have to do is replace this resistor here with that Zener diode with the... Uh, pointing that way and that will have that clamping effect I don't know why they didn't do that maybe well a resistor's cheaper I suppose anyway let us zoom back out should I really zoom back out probably yeah I have defeated the LDR I've got the quick test down here I will measure what voltage it goes across that when it goes open circuit so I shall uh, initially I'll test the voltage across the circuitry. Actually, you know what? I could do that with a meter right now. So this is a cliff quick test for those who haven't seen it before. You open it up, you pop these connections under. It's designed for engineers use in factories and uh, workshops to make a quick connection. And it just means that it safely connects to power. It's got a fuse in it. When you close it down, it shields everything and it makes connection. That is now live, but that's a minor technicality. That's a, it's just designed as a safe way of connecting things temporarily. Now, let me grab another meter here. Let me grab the little cheapy, cheapy meter. And I shall go... Where can I get that good connection here? We'll set this to about... We'll set it 200 volts, because that's what it might go up to. We can connect that to there, and we can connect that to there. And this should give us an indication of the voltage across the LEDs, which is about 8 volts. 
across the LEDs. What if I now take that off and I unplug the LEDs? So now it's open circuit. What's it going to go up to? And is the capacitor going to blow up? It's up to about 60 volts. So that resistor will be getting pretty hot. Let's uh, recompute that. I don't think a capacitor is going to blow up because uh, it is rated for 50 volts. 60 volts isn't too dramatic. I think they've chosen that. So 60 volts times uh, 0 0.015 equals... It's still the best part of a watt that resistor is dissipating. That little resistor is going to get very, very hot. I think I'd have rather had a zener for that. But, uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to leave it to cook for a while. And I'll be back in a moment and I'll tell you, well, we'll see if it discolors. Uh, so I shall disconnect these leads in case they're going to help act as a heat sink. Let's let it... Oh, hold on, what is that smell? Is that my imagination or can I already smell that resistor getting pretty hot? No, that's changing colour. That resistor, hold on. Let's uh, get down, it's going to go a bit grainy. Ah, uh, you know what, I'm going to have to... Get you close to this. One moment, please. So, I can smell that resistor. There's definitely a whiff of resistor, and the colour of that resistor is changing, right? Tell you what, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, and we'll let that cook. I'll be back in a moment. Well, it's getting darker. Uh, a quick check with the camera showed a temperature of... Uh, let me just show you this. 178.7 degrees Celsius. It's getting very hot and the big floor tallied up with that as well. So um, that uh, resistor is not going to last a huge length of time. I mean, it's going to just sit in there and simmer at that high temperature. It's definitely got the aroma de resistor. But it will last a length of time. I think I'd just prefer they'd used a zener for that instead of that because if that does fail open circuit the next thing in line uh, some cur current will flow through the resistor in the LDR but this capacitor could potentially experience that well it is already experiencing an over voltage situation and because the current's limited by this capacitor here it's most likely that would either it could go bang but it's most likely the pressure would build up slow and it would just gradually just kind of pop off its base as they sometimes do uh, I suppose there's one way to Find out and that's cut that resistor out and see what happens. I think that's a great idea. One moment, I'll just do that right now. I'm just going to turn the power off and go, let's pop that resistor out of circuit and see what the voltage goes up to now. I kind of want to know what the voltage does go up to now. I wish I'd actually cut the other end because now I'm not going to be able to actually measure that voltage. Uh, I should be able to measure the voltage. Let's stick it apprehensively up to about 600 volts here on the meter. Uh, for this, I shall just actually zoom back out again. I shall put this temporary thing out of the way. I shall focus back down onto there. Let's uh, see if I can just uh, get hooked up onto that again. So I shall be going there. Oh, that'll do. No, it won't. So I can hook onto here somewhere. This is this where I regret doing this now? But it's extra specially regret it if it really blows up the force. Um, what can I get my negative connection onto? I can get my negative connection onto the back of this, hopefully. I'll just put it on straight onto the back of that terminal. I don't think it's going to blow up, but you just never know. You just never know. We'll see what voltage it's going to go up to. Right here, let's close that down and see what we're going to get. Not a lot. That I don't think I'm making connection there. No, I'm not making connection there. I can't because I wasn't getting anything. That's positive. That should have been connecting to negative. Just give me a moment. I'm going to uh, pause momentarily. Okay, well, this is an anticlimax. The reason I wasn't getting voltage across that capacitor was if I turn it on with the LEDs back in circuit, nothing. Because, and I'll bring a meter in and show you this, the transistor 
has failed short circuit. Let me just uh, show you the continuity here. Make sure it's not powered. I'd be too late now anyway. Uh, the two outer connections, dead short. The voltage of the transistor has been exceeded and it's actually failed. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. But there we go. This is what's happened. So the transistor by shunting has basically saved the circuit. And the only way I'm going to get these LEDs back on again now is to chop that uh, chop that transistor out. Don't need that resistor either. Ta -da, and we have the lights back. So there you go. It's effectively got multiple redundancy built in. It will sacrifice the transistor to save blowing up the capacitor because otherwise the voltage across that capacitor would have gone up to around about 350 volts open circuit or thereabouts. But uh, there we go. A bit of an anticlimax in time trying to blow this up, but at least uh, at least we've kind of like, it's managed to keep it going. And uh, it's an interesting design. It's the classic Chinese LED nightlight. And I really do like the fact that you can pop the uh, covers off these and you can change the LED to the color of your choice just by gently easing these off. But make sure you get the LEDs around the right way. It might also be worth if you get one of these. Uh, just putting a little dot on it to show which was the negative connection. Because if you get them around the wrong way, traditional red LEDs will survive okay, but the white ones and blue and modern green ones don't like the reverse uh, biasing and it can actually damage them. But there we go. Neat. Uh, worth getting, actually. Quite a nice little light. And at, apart from that one megohm resistor, uh, it's actually not too bad. Everything else is really pretty good in there. It's okay.